What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's new video, I'm going to show you how you can draw this cute panda design from the sketch process to then rendering this out without using outlines. As always, if you take part in my tutorials too, post your work online on Instagram or Twitter and tag me at BJ Dell to have a chance to see your work featured in one of my upcoming videos like the people you see here that followed along with my last orange tutorial. Today though, it's all about the panda, so let's get drawing. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cute panda. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas, it's an RGB canvas. For my brushes in this tutorial, we're gonna stick to my fur set. It's available right now on Gumroad. And for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can download that for free. If you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, you will find a link to that, along with the video at the top of the page, kinda of walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate if you've never done it before. So let's go ahead and get started. This one is going to be kind of a rendered look. We're not going to have outlines, but we are going to start out with a sketch. So I'm going to use this blue right here for a sketch. And even though these are fur brushes, some of them you can use for things other than fur if you turn down the size. So fur number one, I like for sketching too. It's got kind of a really as we draw here, you can see it's got like a really kind of loose very smudgy look to it when you make it small. So I've got the opacity down here set to about 30% and the size about 2%. So we'll use that for our sketch pencil or brush. So I'm just gonna start out with the head here. So we'll just do a, a pretty big oval here in the center starting out for the head to kind of map out where that goes. And then I wanna kind of bring the bottom out on this. So we'll start to pull some lines there and connect them. Starting out with the basic shapes and then changing them like this can really help you kind of visualize what you're going for rather than just trying to draw it straight off. So we'll draw that, get that kind of worked around there. Draw some ovals up here for the ears. Once again, basic simple shapes to just block out where everything's going. And then we can kind of add some details. So I'm going to kind of pull this around and back into that oval. So it's got kind of this curve right there, kind of back in on itself. And then it's got just the regular curve there at the back where it connects to the head. So we've got that. Go ahead and kind of block in the body down here. So we'll just do a couple of sketch lines that are curved coming down there. So it'll be the kind of the outside of the arms as those come down off the shoulders. And then we'll draw a couple more sketch lines here, curved in, just kind of where that belly is going to be at. From there, also draw a line across here curved because that'll be the white part of the belly that comes up, that stripe going across. And this is where you really want to keep things loose. So you don't want to go in and try to add just a ton of perfect details. Like I said, this is not going to be an outlined version of this. We're going to do kind of a, a colored in rendered version. So adding too much detail right now and making sure everything's perfect is not going to get you too far in the whole process. A couple of ovals in there just to block out where the inside of those ears go. And then once again, using those as a guide to bring around the inside. From here then, we'll do the patches on the eyes. So a couple of loose big ovals here, one on the left, one on the right. And I'll kind of adjust the overall shape of these. You can see I'm kind of making the bottoms now wider like I did with the head. get wider and come back in and narrow up towards that top. Go ahead and get the nose in here. So just an oval here. We can bring down to kind of a triangle there. 
And a couple of circles here for the eyes. Get those in there, get the pupils. Kind of fill that in so we can see the difference there. And then for the mouth, let's just go ahead and give them kind of a surprise look. So we'll have kind of an open mouth here, which means then for the expression, we'll do some eyebrows up here. We'll kind of have those at an angle, completing that look of surprise on the little panda there. So there we go. Just a pretty quick basic sketch to get us where everything needs to go. So now that we have this done, then we can go ahead and move on to actually starting to add some colors. So to add the colors, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background color here. We're going to have a lot of white on the panda, obviously. So you're not going to be able to see that against the background color we have right now. So let's just change that. Honestly, here you can use whatever you want. It does not matter. Let me try to get something that looks decent on camera here and still lets us see the sketch. So I'm just gonna use that kind of pinkish purple there. That's not gonna be the background color later. We'll add some different colors in, but that'll get us started out. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead then and let's switch our color. We'll start with white. Whoops, we were still on background there, so I need to get off of that. There we go. So let's go ahead then. We're gonna switch to white for the, the color of the panda here and the belly, so the face and the belly. And then for the brush, we're gonna go ahead and move over back to our fur set here. And I'm gonna use fur number five for the brush. That's gonna be the main fur that we use. And then I just need to kind of test out the size here. Maybe about 10%, we'll see. All right. For the layer here, usually if you've watched my videos before, I will draw then on top of the sketch layer when I'm doing an outline design. However, with this, we need to still see where those outlines are because we're gonna be filling it in with solid colors. So it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna keep the sketch layer on top. So we need to make a new layer and then we need to drag this down underneath layer one. And we are still gonna drop the opacity of layer one though. So we don't want it too solid. So if we hit N for blend mode, we're gonna drop this down to, let's say about 50, 52, 53%, I think it looks pretty good. And then this allows us to do the colors and still be able to see. So let me test the size of this. And I think that's pretty good at the, the 10% there. Got the opacity set at about 30, 31%. And I'm just going to kind of follow along and draw or color in the inside here. Now, if we wanted to up this just a little bit to give it a little bit more of that fur texture along the outside, feel free to do that too. It's totally up to you what size you feel comfortable using. So let's get this filled in. I think out here it went a little bit too far. So I'm gonna hold down eraser. So this will select the same fur brush that we're using. I'm gonna pull this back in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back to my brush and do it again just so it has the same look as the rest there. And from here, if you wanna go ahead and come up to your layers menu, you can click off of the sketch layer so you can actually see what's going on here. I've got a little bit of some of that background showing through there, so fill in a little bit better. And using this technique, you'll see me kick on and off that sketch layer quite a bit just so I can see exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, so we've got the head done. Let's go ahead, let's make a new layer now by hitting the plus button there. And I'm gonna bring this layer down underneath layer two. And then I'm gonna go ahead here and switch over my color palette to this gray. That's what we'll use for the body, for the ears, and for those patches on the eyes. Coming down here then, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in this section. Oops. Get this filled in.
just like that. And then we can do the ears from here too. I'm gonna drop the size of this down to that 10% to do the ears. I just want a little bit more control since these are smaller. Let's get that filled in. And then once again, we can drop the sketch to kind of see what we're looking at there. We can kind of fine tune there okay turn the sketch back on then oops let's go ahead and do the the patches there on the eyes so once again I'm gonna come up here to my layer 2 and make a new layer on top for these still with that same 10% there let's go ahead and get these filled in And with this one, if you want it to look the same from left to right, we can always duplicate this instead of doing this again. We could have done the same for the ears too, but to do this, if we just come up here to our layers menu, if we slide this layer to the left, duplicate, go up to our arrow here and come down to the bottom, flip horizontal. We can drag this over to the side and get it placed exactly where we want it. All right, there we go. Next up, let's go ahead and get this white added in for the belly. So if we come down to our layer three here, let's go ahead and make a new layer on top of this one. Switch back to white here. And we'll just get the white added in. Okay, switching off the sketch layer here, just to see what we're left with. And we can kind of fine tune that a little bit. If you want to up the size again of that, just to get more of that fur texture across there, you can. Sketch layer back on now. Let's go ahead and let's get the, let's do the eyes next. So we're gonna come up here layer four and layer four. We're gonna pinch these together so they're all on one now. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer on top of this one. Now we're gonna switch our brush here to do the eyes. Once again, if you drop the size of a lot of these brushes, even though they have a really nice fur texture when you've got them set fairly large, when you drop the size, you can get different uh, results out of them. So for this, what I'm going to do, I use this one quite a bit using the single strand thick. I can use this one for a really kind of nice edge overall brush for a shape. So if we just draw in here an oval, do I have a new layer? Yes, I do. Draw an oval in here, holding down our finger to lock it into a circle. Then using that arrow again to just kind of bring it over, adjust the size a little bit. There we go. At the start of the eye, now we're just gonna drag and drop our color in there. Next up, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu again. We're gonna make a new layer. And we're gonna come back to our color palette. And I've got this dark green right here. This is gonna be the outside then of the iris. On this new layer that we made then, we're just gonna draw, once again, a circle, hold down to lock it in. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit bigger so we can see it better here. Hold down to lock it in. That's gonna be the outline then of the iris. We're gonna go ahead and come back up to our layers menu, make a new layer, drag this down underneath layer seven then, and we're gonna go ahead and fill this in with this green color right here. So I'm just gonna drag around here and drag and drop that color. Let's go ahead and get the pupil in there now. So let's make a new layer on top of layer seven here. So coming back up to layers, select layer seven, new layer. 
grab our color palette again and select black. We'll just draw an oval, hold down, to make a circle, drag and drop the color. Move this over just a little bit here. Get that kind of centered in there. All right. Now let's make this look just a little bit more realistic here. So if we go to layer eight and we select this and then set this as alpha lock, this is gonna allow us to color in on this layer and it's not gonna go outside of that green that we've already colored in. And coming back then to our color palette, We've got this dark green right here, selecting that. Just gonna kinda make a crescent moon shape here at the top. And then coming back to the color palette, let's switch to this white here and make, once again, a crescent moon shape here at the bottom. And with that done now, we're gonna come up here to our Oops, adjustments layer here, and we're gonna use Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna slide this to the right. You can see it's gonna give us a nice fade from that darker color to the lighter down here. Just like that. Turning off the sketch layer now, you can kind of see what we're left with there. From here now, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can see. And then I'm going to go ahead from here and let's just group all of these. So if we pinch nine, seven, eight, and six together, now our eyes all on one layer there. And then I'm going to go ahead, slide this one to the left. I'm going to duplicate it. So now we've got two. And then we're going to flip this just like we did the patch. So if we go up to the arrow, flip horizontally, we want to make sure we have snapping and magnetic turned on so this way when we bring it over here you're going to see it's going to line up perfectly we've got all these lines to tell us that that's exactly horizontal to that one all right now you'll see with the fur it's kind of got that soft diffuse look to it and the eyes right now are really kind of hard line so we're going to blur those just a little bit to make them match everything else. So let's pinch these together. Those are now on one layer. And then we're gonna come back up to our adjustments menu and we're gonna go to Gaussian blur again. We're just gonna slide this to the right and about three, four percent looks pretty good. It's up to you which one you wanna go with. So there we go, they just kinda look a little bit more fitting with the, the overall feel of the fur. With that done now, let's go ahead and add some highlights in here. So let's make a new layer. Still using that same brush then, the single strand thick. I think I'm gonna have the light source coming in from this way. So we'll have the highlights then falling on the right hand side here. So let me draw on an oval here, holding down make it look nice and pretty. And then well, there's just small oval or dot there. Do the same thing over here. Get that on that top right hand corner there. Come on. Looks like maybe I'm frozen here. What is going on? Come on. All right, it looks like it crashed. So even though I'm able to switch stuff here, let's see if doing this will help. It's not doing anything. So I'm gonna have to exit and come back in. So stay tuned. All right, and we're back. So let's go ahead then and zoom back in here, get this highlight done. Get that one filled in. Once again, just a little dot there. And now, just like we did with the eyes, we wanna come back up to our adjustments. Go to Gaussian Blur, slide this to the right, so we've got just that nice glare there. Got that at about 7%. Okay. Now, also with the eyes, we want to have those look a little bit more three-dimensional, look like they actually have some curve to them. So to do this, we're going to come up to our Layers menu again, 
You can go ahead and pinch these together now. So we've got one layer here for the eyes. We're gonna make a new layer on top of this one. And then we're gonna tap this and we're gonna set this one as clipping mask. So clipping mask works a lot like alpha lock. However, it's on a separate layer. So any changes you make does not affect the layer that you're adding them to. We're gonna blur this one again. And since we've already blurred the eyes, we don't wanna blur them again once we blur what we're adding to them. So doing a separate layer is kind of the solution here. So let's go to our color palette again. And I've got this blue right here. We're gonna use that. And this is gonna be kind of a shadow. So once again, light source is coming in this way. So we're gonna have the shadow kind of fall on this back. So I'm gonna draw kind of a tapered, a moving curved triangle here. You'll see I'm just doing this really sloppy. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is gonna be blurred once again. Do the same thing here. And pull this around to that taper there. And this, like I said, just doing it real sloppy. It does not matter. Now, going to adjustments, we're going to go to Gaussian Blur again. We're going to slide this to the right. And you're going to see now how that gives a very believable kind of spherical look to those eyes. Once we pull back out then, you can see it's got a nice three-dimensional look to it. All right, to save some layers now, we're done with those, so we can go ahead and pinch those together. From here, let's go ahead and do a nose. So another new layer here, color palette. We're gonna go with this dark gray here. I don't want it to be super black, so it's just gonna be a darker gray color. And we'll draw an oval. And here, drag and drop our color to fill it in. And I'm going to use the arrow. I'm going to get it a little bit more centered here, number one. But from there then, I'm going to use the warp option. And we'll drag that down so we have that kind of triangle down there. If you don't like the position then, you can always use freeform again. Kind of move this around. From here, if we turn off snapping now, we have a little bit more control over it. And we'll get it to be about right there. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead, add a highlight to that. So grabbing my white again, I'm just kinda do that on top, a little tapered line. And then we wanna adjust this just like we did the eyes, a little bit too hard lined doesn't look right with the overall feel of everything else. So going to adjustments and Gaussian blur, then we can blur this to about 4%. And it just matches up with the design a little bit better. Okay, looks good. Let's go ahead and do the mouth as well here. So another new layer, grabbing that dark gray again here. We can turn on our sketch layer to see where we want this at. And we'll draw the oval there, drag and drop the color in. And then once again here, coming back up to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, just blurring this to about that 4%. Okay. Next up, let's go ahead and get those eyebrows in there. So the uh, nose and the mouth, then we can go ahead and combine these together to save a layer. And then we're going to make a new layer on top of that for the eyebrows. We're going to stick with the same color that we've been using and we're going to switch our brush now still staying with that same fur folder we're going to go over to fur number nine for the eyebrows and with this let's try that 10 percent and see how this works that looks pretty good so you're going to see i'm going to do these really big and they're not going to match up with that but that's okay because what we're going to do then holding down the eraser so once again, make the eraser the same brush that we're using here. We're gonna go in about 7%. Just kind of clean these up and make them match what we initially saw there with the sketch. So you can see just adding that in really quick to begin with, and then coming back in with the eraser gives us exactly what we were going for with our sketch gives us the ability to taper those in really nice 
And then with that sketch gone too, we can come back in, maybe up the size a little bit. If you up the size on the eraser, what this is gonna do is gonna pull in more of that fur texture back into it. And just hit those edges again. Give that really nice fur look. Okay, turn it on our sketch one more time. Last thing we need to do color-wise is just add in the insides of those ears there. And I just realized I didn't actually add this color in there. Maybe I wasn't gonna do the insides of the ears, so let's add in this color. I'll just put it down here in the bottom corner since I kind of forgot it. So with that, let's go back to our fur number five. And let's see, selecting layer three, that's the ears. We'll do a new layer on top of there. We'll drop the size of this down to probably about eight or nine. Let's do the inside of the ears here. like that. I think that might be a little bit too orangish. Let me get a little bit more pink here. There we go. I like that a little bit better. So I'm going to change that out now. Okay. So from here, let's turn off the sketch. Let's pull back out and see what we're left with. So this is our base design. We've got all the components in there. Everything is filled in. So from here, we're ready to really make this pop, go in and start doing the highlights and shadows. So to begin highlights and shadows, first off, we're gonna switch our brush. We're gonna come up here to the brush library again, and we're gonna use fur number one. That was the same thing that we we're using to begin with, with the sketch. That's what we're gonna to use to do the shadows and the highlights. And then let's go ahead and start with the eyes first. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. Let's select black. And then I'm going to come in here on layer four. We'll just go ahead and tap this and hit alpha lock. We shouldn't really go outside of this, but it just saves us the hassle if we happen to. And then for the size, let's test this out and see. Maybe a nine. Too small there. Maybe a 15. 15 looks pretty good so I'm just basically building up a shadow there around the eye just going in really light and just building it up barely pressing on the screen I don't want it to get too dark there all right I think that looks good next up let's go ahead and do the face here so switching over our color here I'm gonna use for this uh, let's see, let's go ahead and use this blue that we used inside the eyes. Blue is nice to use as a shadow on a white color instead of using black or gray. Blue tints really work well for shadows on whites. So that's what we're gonna use here. Then we're gonna come down to layer two, which is our head, and we're gonna alpha lock that. Still using that same fur one here. Probably gonna up this a little bit, maybe let's see 20 and see what that does. I think that's pretty good. So we're just gonna start to pull down shadow on the left hand side and then also down here around the bottom of the head. Bringing it back up, drop the size just a little bit. Let me go in here underneath the eyebrows, and down towards the nose. Do the same thing here on this side. Do it a little bit lighter, and I'm not going to come all the way down to the nose like I did on that one. Dropping the size here to, see, about a six. Come down underneath the mouth here, and then kind of around the top, just a little bit to make that look a little bit more three dimensional. Coming in under the nose with that same size. Just like that up this to about 10 and bring just a little bit here on this side 
Not a lot. Go back up to 12 here. Just a little bit. All right, that looks good. We can do the same thing here with the belly. So if we switch over to layer six, tap this, whoops, set this as alpha lock. Go ahead and build that up a little bit. Need to go in really light, barely touching the screen. If you're having problems that it's getting too dark, you can also play around with the opacity slider, depending on how heavy your hand is. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead now and do some of the shadows on the gray. So if we go up here and let's select black, let's select layer three, which is this body part here and then the ears. We'll alpha lock those. Bring this along the back here just a little bit. Up in the size here to that 20 again. Go underneath the chin here. Build that up. And then dropping the size down to about 12. Just add this in here so it kind of breaks up that belly from the arm. Okay. Going back up to about 18, hit along the back of this ear here. Just like that, just a little bit down here, not too much. All right, dropping the size down a little bit, hit this one more time here. Okay, now let's add in some highlights there as well. So coming back up to the color palette, we're gonna go ahead and go over to this light blue color here. And we'll hit along the sides here. And this is kind of cool too. So using light blue, we used blue for shadows on white, but using that light white blue on the gray or the black can work as highlights. So you can see using a somewhat similar value can do the exact opposite of what you're going for, depending on what color it's going on top of. Just hitting around the sides here. Give that nice highlight glow from that light source coming in. Up in this a little bit here, we'll hit the eye here. If we switch over to layer four now, we don't want it to do too much here because it's going to blend into that white. So just a little bit there, a little bit there, just like that. I'm gonna hit the side here. If I switch over to layer three, dropping the size down just to once again break this out. I'm gonna bring in that difference between the, the arm and the body there. And then let's get inside the, the ears here as well. So coming back up to our layers menu, layer nine inside the ears, we're gonna set that as alpha lock. Color palette, I'm gonna use this darker reddish color here and we'll up the size maybe to about 16%. Kind of come in here around that inside part. Darken those up. Just like that. And then I'm gonna switch back to the black here and just go back in closer to that edge just so it's got more of a transition between the different colors there. All right, finally then the eyebrows here, let's go ahead and do those. So we've got layer eight. If we tap that, set this as alpha lock and then drop the size down to probably about six, five or six. And then we'll use that white blue color here Kind of hitting there just a tad bit. Don't want to get too much because it's going to blend in once again to the, the body there. 
So, all right, there we go. So that's pretty much our design as far as our character goes. Let's go ahead and add a quick background in here. So to do this, let's go back up to our layers menu. We're gonna come down to the very bottom layer and then we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer on top of this one. We're gonna to touch that one and we're gonna drag it down underneath layer three. So this one's at the very bottom now. And then from here, we're gonna come back up to our brush library and let's switch over, let's see. Let's use brush 15. This one has got a really good texture to it. Once again, if we go real small with these brushes, we can use them for sketching. If we go really, really big, we can almost blow out that entire fur texture and enlarge it so much that it's just gonna give us nice background textures. So with fur 15 then, got this green at the bottom here. Let's just drag and drop that. That's gonna be our base background color. From here then, we've got a dark green. Let's just use this. And I've got the opacity set. Let's go about 30%. I think that'll work. And we're just gonna go in here in the background, bring in that darker color. Oops. Around here. Just going in real light and splashing the color. Then switching back here, we've got this lighter color here. Let's use that on the sides here. Once again, our light source is coming in from this way. So if we use that over here, it's gonna go with the uh, kind of color scheme we've got. I am gonna pull some of it over here just to lighten this up just a little bit. Just like that. And then coming back in to the color palette with this yellow, we're gonna grab that. And we'll just kind of splash that more here on this side. Finally, I'm gonna come back in with that first green color here and just kind of pull in some more back in here so it's not too dark. All right, so there we go. Finally then, I'm just gonna come up, make a new layer at the top. Like I always do, grab a outliner here, which is gonna be the single strand and come down at the bottom, just sign this guy real quick. And there you go, we're gonna be done. So there we go, nice little tutorial of how to draw this cute little panda, kind of a rendered effect rather than a heavy outline. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so that you can get alerted when I post new videos. Also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you guys take part in any of these tutorials, if you follow along, definitely post your work online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, tag me at BJ Dell with your work and you'll have the possibility of seeing your work featured in an upcoming video. As for me, I can also be found online, bjdell.com. And that is it for today's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and until next time, keep creating.